Hi, Vanessa here and welcome to my channel. Today we are discussing American Dirt by Janine Kumins. First of all, I want to wish everyone Happy New Year's and Happy 2020. If you are like me, you give yourself a little bit of grace period before you start the new year and today is my New Year's. I'm wishing everyone a great reading year in 2020. Let's talk audiobooks. I had the pleasure of listening to American Dirt on Libro FM, which is an audiobook platform that actually partners up with your local independent bookstore. So when you purchase an audiobook from Libro FM, they actually connect with the local independent bookstore and they split the profits with them. I'll leave their link below so you can go and check them out as well. I've been listening to audiobooks for a few years because I commute quite often and I wanted to squeeze more reading time in. I found that the radio kind of got boring and I love audiobooks. I find myself listening to audiobooks and reading the book at the same time because so often I would stop at my destination and stay in my car for 10 to 15 minutes more because I wanted to know what had happened. <laughs> So I was very blessed to listen to American Dirt on audio and one of my rules for listening to audiobooks is I need to love the narration and if you're going to listen to anything American Dirt is the perfect one to listen to. I have to give kudos to the narrator Yarly Arez Mendy. She did such a fantastic job narrating the story and really bringing it to life. In American Dirt, we are introduced to bookshop owner Lydia, who lives in Mexican city, Acapulco. She has a husband who is a journalist and an eight-year-old boy named Luca. One day, a man named Javier comes into her bookshop and they start this conversation as book lovers do, where we kind of swap and talk about our passions for reading and they create this beautiful friendship. Little do we know that Javier is actually the leader of a cartel in her city that really strikes up a lot of criminal activity and very violent crimes. Um, that's very complicated for their friendship. Lydia does not know this until she stumbles on some of the research that her husband has been doing that names Javier as a leader of the cartel. And he writes a few pieces that does not sit well with Javier. Something happens that triggers um, his anger towards her family and her husband, and he actually orders a hit and he massacres her entire family, except for herself and Luca, who was in hiding. And that is just in the first few chapters. So we kind of are brought to this horrific scenario where her entire family is massacred and now her and her eight year old boy Luca have to flee their home and look towards America for safety because they don't know where Javier and his men have connections and if they will come to continue the vendetta for Lydia. And what I liked about the first few chapters is it also goes back and forth to Javier and Lydia forming their friendship because we don't know that Javier was cartel and I really liked him as well because it really showcased his um, human side, um, his fears, his vulnerabilities. And it isn't until we find out with Lydia who Javier is. This journey is long and there are so many challenges and barriers along the way for Lydia. Lydia, who was a bookshop owner, who lived a comfortable lifestyle, who had um, access to resources, and she is left and brought back to ground zero and fighting for her basic instinct of safety, of protecting her child and protecting herself. And we feel for her because she is constantly on this go and she never got a chance to mourn for her family who was so brutally taken away from her. And we also get to see the insights of Luca, this little, very intelligent boy and what it means for him to be taken from this safe home and kind of pushed into this, this lifestyle, this journey where nothing is comfortable, where you can go hungry, where you meet strangers, where you meet people who are also on this same type of journey running away from something and you either have to band together or they also pose as um, additional dangers as well. I wasn't kidding when I said I could listen to the narrator's voice 
all day long. She did such a phenomenal job um, with the story. And what I really enjoyed is this author did not rush through anything. She did not skip any of the scenarios that could have happened along the journey of reaching America. And we never knew how safe Lydia and Luca was going to be or how uh, people they met along the way, if they were actually friends or foes. And that danger never kind of slipped away. We never felt safe. Um, it was actually completely heartbreaking. It really gave a deeper insight that even today when you know we have so many resources Lydia speaks English and um, even then it didn't really help her on her journey she is a smart educated woman and she has been put into this horrific scenario where she's running for her life and just really taken back down to what her nose is just survival instincts on the flip side, we also get to know a little bit of Javier, of what it means to be in the cartel, of what that lifestyle looks like, or how they get them, or um, what really shaped him to be who he is today. It's a very complicated relationship between him and Lydia, um, and there was just so much complexity and depth to this story. I was literally blown away. I am so glad that this was one of the first um, audiobooks I listened to in 2020 because it really set up how my reading year was going to be. Easily, this gets a five-star rating from me. I highly recommend that you do um, listen to it. Listen to it is my recommendation, but if you can't, definitely uh, pick it up and read it. It comes out January 21st. And if you are interested, my next video, I'm going to be discussing Dear Girls by comedian Ali Wong. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I wish you happy reads. If you like this video, please subscribe um, and also give it the thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.